What's going on guys? Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. This is it. The ultimate console on a 120 inch screen. So I'm filming final promo videos and basic videos like I always do. This is officially it. I'm calling this the ultimate gaming console. Long story short, if you guys have not been following the build, I do have a customer by the name of Robbie in California. Um, he had the same idea that I had about a while back, but I never executed it. Luckily, he was a person that wanted this type of build and I was finally able to execute it. And I'm so happy with the way it came out. Basically, a lot of people have been seeing Eugene's build with the 40 terabyte bar top, but not many people do want console games like the PlayStation and such on a bar top. So I came up with an idea basically a while back in my head. I didn't broadcast it live. I just wanted to make a PC where you could plug it in, put it to any screen you want and play. This is Robbie's ultimate gaming console. I had to go big for the promo. I attached it to my 120 inch 4K Xiaomi Mi Zhao projector. I just had to go big on it. And so far it is insane. Now I did post a video of the projector a while back. This is an ultra short throw projector. Basically the projector is right there underneath the screen and it shoots up. Nothing overhead, I didn't do it that way. I have to make an update video on the Xiaomi Mi Zhao projector because that video has a ton of views and people are asking me for a update. This right now, I believe I'm in month seven um, of the projector and it is great. Again, 4K and we do have the ultimate gaming console connected to. Now again, if you've been following the build, this is Robbie's um, build. Uh, Robbie bought the case. Robbie bought everything on this. Um, case is big, not big in a bad way. You can kind of see it compared to like my little media center. Big thing that's cool about this case is that it does have handles. Um, this is running a regular ITX motherboard, regular sized. My original idea was to go a little bit smaller using a mini ITX, but it's not too bad. I would have to probably investigate more on cases as far as my personal ultimate console but basically this will be underneath his desk he has the desktop you plug it in you put your hdmi in we have the playstation dongle because remember in his build he is using playstation controllers i've lost my controller <laughs> oh there it is now uh, he does have the playstation controllers on this build and again very responsive literally able to navigate hyperspin amazing stuff and again big shout out to robbie for giving me the opportunity because this is insane and i don't want to let it go but i will be shipping it tomorrow to you buddy but i will be making another one 100 percent for me it's going to go right there I, I need this in my life again as far as the actual um desktop it is here this is the case it does have sides to it i'm just going to kind of clean up the wiring a little bit uh, before it goes out the stuff this does have side panels and such so again basically with this it's going to go underneath his desk all you really need is the playstation dongle i have my keyboard connected to it because i do always suggest to have a keyboard and mouse handy and we have right now one may flash bar um we're going to play a little bit i'll show you i'll be brutally honest though the may flash bar is again it's 120 inch screen though um really the may flash bar probably if i was doing a big screen like this it should be up above um but it works uh and i'll do a little bit of gameplay on it as far as like actual shooting games um you know you're not really aiming at the screen per se kind of defeats the purpose but again that's because i am on a 120 inch screen i mean again right now chilling in my house on the couch i'm able to basically bounce around play a couple of games i'm doing this one-handed so i'll play like real quick I'll load up some RK classics again using the PlayStation controller. We got Street Fighter 2. I could load that up real quick. Long press on the X brings us our loading. And then we're in it. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So you're able to enjoy arcade action. You're able to enjoy PC games, pinball. I mean, everything that a PC can handle, it is in this. So it's very cool. Again, I had this idea. Robbie was the first one to officially like email me, gave me his ideas. And I was like, oh my God, there is somebody in this world that has the same idea that I have. <laughs> and as you can see right now, I'm doing it one handed, but 
Oh, I didn't pick Ryu. Oh my God, that's a sin. <laughs> but just to kind of show it off a little bit. Again, PlayStation controllers. We got the Wiimotes for the shooting games. I don't know any of Zangief's moves. But again, all this mapped out to the PlayStation controller. I'm right now again on the couch. I could just press the PlayStation button. It brings me back to the main menu. I could hold down the PlayStation button. Brings me back to the real main wheel. And I could go up and down and navigate. So right now we could go into some PC games. I was just playing, I just posted it. I, I did the Mortal Kombat 11 Fatality. On this big of a screen, it is pretty insane. Um, but again, you got your PC games. Uh, we could probably try, try a driving game. We'll try this Need for Speed Heat. Long press X on that. And we'll let it load. So again, it is a PC game. Let it do its thing. I do learn that basically you just don't touch the controller. Let it do its thing and launch. And eventually it will just take over the screen. Again, just real quick commenting about the May flash bars. Uh, again, I am using a monster of a screen. So the shooting is a little off. If you were using a regular like 32 inch or even a 60 inch, it would make sense. But I'm on 120 inches and uh, I really just did it to show off a little bit, to be honest. <laughs> so again, as you can see, we got our PC game loaded up, Need for Speed, playing with the PlayStation controller. It is mimicking an Xbox controller. This is so difficult to do one-handed. Let me just put the camera down. So again, just hanging out, we could play uh, some solo action. I'm not sure how the mic is gonna sound because it's right by my chest, but we'll real quick let the loading go through for Need for Speed and we'll play a quick race. So we got Need for Speed. Again, using the PlayStation controller. I am not looking at the screen. Again, pretty cool. I don't want to bore you guys too much with it. Um, again, this is a PC game, so I have to basically quit it like I normally would quit an actual PC game. So now as I go into it and press the quit button, it will bring, basically it will exit out and bring us back into hyperspin. Awesome, like I said, amazing and awesome stuff. Again, I'm using one hand to navigate, holding on the PlayStation button, it will exit. Let me lower it. So we got the, uh, I had to lower the TV. So we got the TV lower. Basically now I whipped out the Wiimote set to mode two. And again, I could use the D-pad on this um, or I could still use the PlayStation controller. Basically with the May flash bar set to channel two mode two, this is acting as an actual keyboard and mouse. So the D-pad is basically up, down, left, right. Um, I'll show you real quick um, the arcade I was playing. I was playing some Time Crisis. Again, I am playing on a 120 inch screen. Um, if you were playing like on a regular, like, you know, 32 or even a 60 inch, um, this would work better. But basically I'm aiming the whole time at the May flash bar. Let's load up time crisis. And this is a little bit of a better um, situation for Robbie to see how you can navigate and stuff. So right now, as you could see my blue crosshair, again, I'm not really aiming at the TV right now. If you think about it, I'm really aiming at the, May flash bar. So if I hit the D pad up, it adds credits. Well, this game, there's no start, but you just kind of pull the trigger and boom. Let me bump the volume a little bit. Again, the wife is sleeping. Don't want to bother her with my gaming. But again, if you were playing like, you know, in a real practical area, um, these would be awesome. But that's also why I do like crosshairs. Um, and again, I'm, I'm at a fair distance right now compared to when I shot the tutorial videos. So there's no hiccups at all. And I right now, I don't know, I'm like maybe seven feet away. And it's awesome. I mean, again, May flash bars. Also playing the Wii. Wii with this was awesome. With the nunchuck, it was definitely a awesome feeling. Uh, again, even the Wii shooting games, uh, I could exit out. I'll exit out again. The only big thing again is that with me going into the light gun games for the Wii, 
I do have to go to ma uh, mode four. So what I'll do real quick, I'm gonna just lower it so my wife doesn't kill me. I'm gonna start this game in mode two, but then I'm gonna come over here and then activate mode four. And there's mode four. And basically again, once I did start the game, when I change the mode, the Wii modes disconnect or turn off. I just gotta turn them on. I get a slight rumble. Wiimote one connected. And now we're good. So as far as for Robbie or anybody with Wiimotes, you could start the Wii emulator, go change modes, and then bring it back. I'm gonna also test real quick. We are going to keep the emulator on, switch back to mode two, and then we're gonna see if the PlayStation controller comes back. So we'll do some arcade. And again, this is this is cool. I mean, I'll be honest, we with the Wii Motes, it is very cool. I'm gonna just start this game. My arm is tired from holding the camera. <laughs> but again, at a fair distance away, I'm gonna put the camera down a little. My arm is getting tired. <laughs> again, I was shooting the promo video and here we go gonna make sure that the camera's fine mission start here we go this game requires a off-screen reload so you have to off-screen and pull the trigger or you just go off the screen I believe it's just off the screen no need to pull the trigger again if you think about it I'm really aiming at my projector or I'm aiming at the desktop if you really think about it I'm not really shooting at the screen like you really would with an actual gun game but again, I am playing on a 120 inch screen. And it's awesome. I mean, again, it is definitely awesome. Now, again, this is acting like a real Wii. So if I press like the plus or the minus in this game, it doesn't do anything, but usually it's the pause. I'm right now going to put this to channel two. And when I do that, communication with the Wii mode has stopped. I'm gonna reactivate the Wii Let's see if I press minus. Ooh, it actually recognized it as a keyboard input. We are back. Does the PlayStation controller work? It does. Okay, there you go, Robbie. So we just figured that out. Um, so if you exit with mode four, it caused the confusion with joy to key and all that. But as you can see, we exited before exiting. We put it back to channel two. We are good to go right now. Awesome, awesome, awesome. This is the ultimate gaming console right now. It's gonna be difficult to ship this, but I'm gonna play a little bit. <laughs> now, what's also crazy is that if you do exit hyperspin, right? Pretty cool, because again, these Wiimotes act as a mouse and a keyboard. This actually is our mouse. So again, as it's acting as a mouse and a keyboard, I could basically highlight on the desktop the hyperspin, and then if I press the plus is enter, it will launch hyperspin. Awesome. Now, the only big thing that I did note is that if I come over here now and turn off the system, I believe hyperspin will prevent it from shutting down. As you can see there, it does say, hey, hyperspin is on. So I would probably suggest, I'm gonna cancel it. Uh, I would suggest definitely, and as you can see, kind of gets this little spazzing out of end process. I would definitely suggest exiting hyperspin going to the desktop and boop now it shuts down that is it now also in all reality if you do want to exit hyperspin literally exit it now you do have the desktop if i grab my mouse and my keyboard uh, again a couple things that you could do uh, i think i'm connected to my wi-fi again i'm in my living room right now probably best to get a actual mouse pad but I could launch basically some online enabled games if I wanted to. We could do Epic Games. I think Call of Duty was doing an update. But right now, again, that's why I usually have a keyboard and mouse handy. Because you never know. You might want to just launch the PC game on its own. Again, I probably would recommend a actual mouse pad. But as you can see, we got Battle.net. And it looks like it is doing an update for Call of Duty but essentially you would be able to launch online games on the ultimate console.
Well, there you guys have it, guys. The ultimate gaming machine, the ultimate gaming console. 39 terabytes worth of gaming. This is it. Robbie, get ready. It's coming to you. All right, here we go. This is now boxing time, getting ready to ship. We put the side panels on. As you can see, Robbie, I'll let you take the plastic film off. Just a couple of things. Um, I did discover that basically the PlayStation dongle, you could put it on any USB port. So you have two up top. I would probably suggest those for maybe the May flash bars. And you have a couple in the back. So it doesn't matter where, just plug it in and call it. Just one quick note, I'm not sure if it's gonna matter, but just so you know, your graphics card is here on the right. I've been using this HDMI right up top. So there's a display port. This HDMI is what I've been always using. Um, probably best to just use it that way. I'm gonna cap it though. This way during transit, no dust gets into it. And we are A-OK. -okay. This is gonna go in the box. All right, so we got the PC case in its box that originally came in. I will put the top on it. That is it. The only thing inside of this box right here is the PC case. Plugs, PlayStation controllers, Wiimotes is going to go into your other box. I don't want to scratch the case and such, so I'll seal this up and we're going to get ready with this box. All right, now we're going to prepare this box. Again, everything that anybody sends me, I give it right back to you. you never know if you ever want to keep them for memories or, you know, maybe Amazon, you might want to return something later on. I always give you original everything back even though they are empty boxes they still come back to you but i will be using them in a very strategic way this right here is our graphics card and robbie basically sent me the wiimotes in bubble wrap we are basically now going to put the wiimotes in the graphics card box so first box up again wiimotes in also robbie uh, and anybody anytime transporting these i always flip the batteries so the batteries are in here but they are flipped so always want to do that this way they don't turn on in transit um so again batteries are there you just gotta flip them when they're there we will put our little cover on and again we are going to seal it into this graphics car box next up we got the uh power supply box it's just empty inside of this is like a little bag that has a couple extra connectors um like if you wanted to add more hard drives and stuff so that's in there in all honesty, this box will be not used. As far as like the other little stuff, again, the power supply box isn't being used. We have like everything else, like the uh, the chip, the RAM box, the SSD. These are all empty. Um, but again, I do like to give you everything that you've given me just in case. So basically these will be just kind of supports to make sure nothing kind of shakes around. I might have to get you a smaller box. I'll see if I have one lying around but let's keep going. I also basically use the empty boxes as like supports for the bottom, so we don't need to waste packing. Um, I got my hard drive I gave it, bud, and with the empty boxes for the other two 16 terabyte drives. Um, that's mostly it. We're gonna take now our motherboard box, and the only main thing we're gonna be putting inside of this box is your antenna. This goes in the back of the PC for Wi-Fi can't miss it it looks like you know radio antennas and we're going to be putting the power plug also in this box to prevent from shaking i'm going to put in the may flash bars so again we have both of them inside of it with the little stands and the double-edged tape that it comes with so again inside motherboard box your msi box power cable the antennas and the may flash bars i might also sneak in i will sneak it in we're going to sneak in the PlayStation dongle here. So inside, we got PlayStation dongle in the wrapping. This will be inside. Last time with this box, again, PlayStation dongle, May flash bars, antennas, power cord. So we got motherboard in, graphics card box, again, housing all the Wiimote stuff, Wiimotes and the nunchucks. Last thing we gotta do is grab our PlayStation boxes and pop in the controllers. And this is it, final piece of the puzzle. We have the two, PlayStation controllers. Again, I always try to open these like without ripping them. I'm trying to keep it professional again, as if you just got it, always. There we have it, everything in one box, ready to go. 
we're gonna basically stuff the top with the packing supply. But we got two boxes going out today. 